So I grew up surfing in Santa Cruz, California and skiing up in Lake Tahoe. And uh, ever since I was a little kid, I dreamed about combining the two. Wave skiing, why not? Well, once we made the decision to move forward with the project, the first thing we had to do was figure out what kind of equipment we were gonna use. So Cody came up to Whistler last summer and we tried about 10 different kinds of skis, boot binding systems out on the lake up there. And in the end, we decided to go with Alpine boots and bindings and three different kinds of skis. So after years of dreaming, a year of testing, here we are in Maui and we're ready to ski on some waves. Now it's getting weird. Last wave of the day, took an air over closeout section and uh, came down, landed on my feet and the uh, ski just gave way, it broke out right underneath my foot. Now we need to figure out how to fix it. We made a little visit to the hardware store, got ourselves nail brackets, duct tape, epoxy, some screws and we're going to MacGyver these skis back together. There are a lot of variables that go into every day of wave skiing. Uh, swell size, swell direction, wave period, wind, weather, all these things. I kind of underestimated it. And so far here in Maui, the wind has been howling just about every day. It definitely makes things a little bit more challenging. After a bunch of down days, I decided to throw out the kite. You know, I was, uh, I've been a kiteboarder for the last seven years and I decided I want to try these on skis. definitely worked. I mean, in a half hour, we were out there and already popping tricks and doing loops and stuff. So if we can do that in a half hour, you know, with a little bit of training, a little bit of testing, you could be going a lot further with this. Finally, in the middle of the night one night, I noticed that the wind had stopped and I could just hear this deep rumble. It was the swell hitting the rocks on the ocean. And I remember thinking, wow, that sounds pretty big. Right then, it just kind of sparkled that energy. You're just like, oh man, here we go. There's only one way to, to find out if it really works in big waves. Are you psyched or scared? Uh, a little bit of both, always.
walked out of one of the best rides of the, the whole trip and Levi's coming in for the rescue to pick him up because there's another big wave right behind him. I knew the swell, the intervals were tight and I had one chance to get him and I made a committed decision. Came in, Mike got on the sled. I just grab on, he's like, hang on! And the next thing I know, I just see Levi pin this jet ski and all of a sudden, I just feel it smash on my back. It basically lifted the ski up vertical so I was straight over the front and I just got tossed over the front. Just remember the ski just tumbling for like 300 yards to the inside. When I came up, I'm like, I knew the ski was destroyed. I was more concerned about Mike. It turned out we were fine, but the jet ski was fully out of commission. The engine pulled off its mounts, the drive shaft was twisted, parts of the frame were off. And we destroyed a ski, but we're lucky that no one got hurt and we had an epic day. Yeah, so we skied on waves and uh, it was really cool. It was a unique experience. I've always fantasized about really skiing on waves. To see you guys actually come over here to do it and, and pull it off, I think it is really cool. If you never try things, if you never put yourself out there and try something new, then you'd never know what's possible. Is it something that people are going to do every day? Probably not. But at the same time, they showed everybody in the world that it can be done. Coming up next time on Solomon Free Ski TV, we check in with the Solomon team to find out how the season is going so far.